Question 13. Calculations involving time. Number 1. Let's look at A. We have 7 minutes and 15 seconds and we must add 8 minutes and 25 seconds to it. So when we add, we can only, always, we can only add things with the same units. That means that we can add our minutes together. So we've got 7 minutes plus 8 minutes. That gives us a total of 15 minutes. And then if we look at our seconds, we've got 15 seconds plus 25 seconds. So if we add those two together, we get a total of 40 seconds. Press pause to complete B and C now. Let's now look at D. Again, we're going to add our minutes first. 9 minutes plus 5 minutes gives us 14 minutes. And then, if we add our seconds, 45 seconds plus 20 seconds, we get 65 seconds. But now we know that 1 full minute is equal to 60 seconds. So we cannot leave our answer like this, because we have another full minute hiding in there. We know that 60 of those seconds gives us another minute, which will give us a total of 15 minutes. And we will be left with those 5 seconds, because 65 minus 60 leaves us with 5 seconds. So our final answer is 15 minutes and 5 seconds. Press pause to complete E and F by yourself now. Let's look at 2. It takes Pam 5 minutes and 45 seconds to walk to the corner cafe and 6 minutes and 20 seconds to walk home afterwards. She spends 10 minutes and 15 seconds to buy the items that she needs. For how long is she away from home? We need to add up all three of these times. So, without writing it out, I'm going to look at them like what I've underlined. We have 5 minutes plus 6 minutes, which gives us 11 minutes, plus another 10 minutes will give us 21 minutes. Then, when we add up our seconds, I'm going to add these two up first, because 45 plus 15 gives us 60, and 60 plus 20 will give us 80 seconds. Now again, we can't leave our answer like this because we have a full minute hiding in there. So 80 seconds minus 60 seconds gives us another full minute. So we'll have 22 minutes in total, and we'll be left with 20 seconds. So that is for how long she is away from home. Make sure that you filled this in and written this neatly in your workbook. Let's continue on to 3. Now, for A, we are adding 9 hours and 25 minutes and 8 hours and 15 minutes. So again, we add our hours separately. 9 hours plus 8 hours will give us 17 hours. And then, when we add our minutes, 25 minutes plus 15 minutes will give us a total of 40 minutes. So our final answer is 17 hours and 40 minutes. Press pause to complete B and C by yourself now. Let's look at D. First, we're going to start. We're going to add our hours together. 4 hours plus 7 hours will give us 11 hours. Then, 55 minutes plus 20 minutes will give us a total of 75 minutes. Now this again is a problem, because we know that one full hour is equal to 60 minutes. So if we minus 60 minutes from there, we will have another hour, so giving us a total of 12 hours, and 75 minus those 60 minutes will leave us with 15 minutes. So our final answer is 12 hours and 15 minutes. Press pause to complete E and F by yourself now. Let's look at 4. It takes Janie 
22 minutes to get to school and 19 minutes to walk home after school. She spends 7 hours and 30 minutes at school every day. For how long is she away from home every day? So now we must add these three times up. We only have hours in this part, so we're going to write it down. We have 7 hours so long. Then we add 22 minutes and 19 minutes. When we add those two up, you can do it mentally or you can do it on the side. So when we add those up, we add our units first, we'll get 11, then our tens, so we have 41 minutes. Then we still need to add these 30 minutes. 41 plus 30 is 71 minutes. But we can't leave our answer like this because we have a full hour hiding in there. So 71 minus those 60 minutes will give us another one hour. So we'll have eight hours. And 71 minus 60 leaves us with 11 minutes. Make sure that you understand how to do number four and press pause to do four and five by yourself in your workbook. Let's continue on to six. For six, we are now adding two days and 10 hours and three days and 15 hours. So we first add our days. Two days and three days gives us a total of five days. We use D for the abbreviation of days. Then we add 10 hours and 15 hours, those two, to give us a total of 25 hours. Now we know that one full day is equal to 24 hours. So in these 25 hours is hiding another day. So we take those 24 hours away and we make it one full day, so we have six days. And 25 minus 4 leaves us with one hour, so that is our final answer. Press pause to complete B and C by yourself now. Next, let's look at D. Now we are adding weeks and days to weeks and days. So we add our weeks first. Two weeks and one week give us three weeks. And then we've got five days and four days. There's our five days, there's our four days, so we get nine days. But we can't leave our answer like this because nine days is one week and two days because a full week is equal to seven days. So this leaves us with four full weeks and two days. And that is our final answer. Press pause to complete E and F by yourself now. Next, let's have a look at 7. It says Roger is away for one week and four days in June. So I'm going to underline that. And two weeks and five days in July. How many weeks and days is he away for during the two months? So all we need to do is add these two up together. So we add our weeks first. One week plus two weeks gives us three weeks. And if we add our days, we get nine days in total. But we've got nine days is equal to one week and two days. So our final answer is four weeks in total and two days. And that is how long he is away for. Press pause to complete seven and eight by yourself in your workbook.